Welcome back to the channel. And today we have a super fun geometry nodes tutorial that's very beginner friendly. We're gonna be making this sort of, these columns that kind of come out of the ground like this. And they kind of oscillating like that. And this is just such a fun project, okay? We'll be doing some very simple lighting and materials as you can see here. But the main focus is on actually making this over here. It's something you can easily render out and then share with your friends, put on Instagram. It's just a fun beginner geometry nodes project. And you can see here, it's not too complicated, only a few nodes. It'll only take us, I don't know, about eight to 10 minutes of node stuff itself. And then the rest is really easy. Um, it's mostly all easy anyway. So if you're following the channel or supporting the channel on Patreon, you'll get access to this blend file on there. But if not, you can still watch this and make it in Blender. Blender is completely free. So um, yeah, let's jump in. And I hope you guys enjoy learning how to make this in Blender 5.1. Okay, so the goal here is just to keep it as simple as we can possibly do. So jumping into a new scene in Blender 5.1, go ahead and just select the default cube, it'll work fine, any mesh object, and then go over into your geometry nodes workspace. Now, as you might already know, I have my own custom geo nodes workspace, and this is simply just to give you guys more space to see on the screen. It's the exact same thing. I've just got a 3D viewport here and the node workspace, okay? Only thing I've taken away is the spreadsheet we're not really going to be using. So um, yeah, just go ahead, select your cube and click new to add a node network. Okay. So once you have that node network, what you're going to do is we want some sort of grid here to get started with so something flat that we can add segments to. So we're going to go shift a over here. We're going to go search and just type in G R I D and then get the mesh primitive grid, place it over here and then take that mesh output and put it into the geometry like so. So, so far, nice and simple. And then let's give this some size. So we're gonna make it 4.5 meters large and let's come here to the vertices and let's give it something like 42 by 42 vertices, okay? So if I were to go Z and go wireframe over here, you can see we've got a nice amount of topology. Now for, for a bit, I'm gonna stay in the wireframe here, just like this. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to go shift a search and I'm going to go merge. I'm going to go merge by distance and place it on this cable. And the thing here is this might seem redundant because if we drag up this distance here, like let's say for example, we make it 0.12. Okay. It's just going to do it evenly. So we get a nice even pattern, which we don't want. So we want it to only happen to some of this. So let's go ahead and drag here on the selection, drag on it and type in noise. And then let's get a noise texture and let's go for a noise texture color like so. And at the moment, nothing's happening, but we need to dial in the contrast a bit. So let's go shift a, let's go search. Let's get the color ramp. So I'm just gonna type in color ramp. There we go. Grab the color ramp, place it on here. So now it makes it into a grayscale, and we can also up the contrast. So I'm going to drag the black up and drag the white down. And already this is giving us a relatively nice result. But to really get it that sort of like hexagonal sort of feel, honeycomb structure, if you will, what we need to do is we need to come here after the merge by distance, we need to go shift a search and get a dual and get a dual mesh and place it on here. And now you can see we're in business. That's looking really good. Still seeing a lot of squares though. So what we can do is simply just come here to our noise texture, right? Just to kind of get rid of some of these squares and just mess with these settings a bit. So I'm gonna go and give it a detail of 10, take it way up, okay? I'm gonna give it a scale of negative five, okay? And what I found worked really well is taking the roughness all the way up to one. And then most importantly, it's taking this to nine, this value down here, the lacunarity. You can see now that's looking okay. Maybe I'll just take it just a tiny bit down, but you get the idea. We just wanna get rid of those squares as much as possible. So now that's looking really good. So I'm gonna go back into solid view. Okay, and here's where fun, things get fun. So now what we can do, we can come over here. We've essentially created this grid. So I'm just gonna move these things closer together. So now after the dual mesh, let's just extrude them. So we're gonna go shift A, search and get an extrude. Get an extrude mesh, place it on here. It's gonna extrude everything at all at the same amount. So what we'll do is we'll actually make this extrusion amount 0 0.001, like very small. So it doesn't go very high, but if we now go Z and go to wireframe again, let's just to be able to see what actually happened there. Let's go after the extrude mesh. Let's go shift A search and get a scale element. So type in scale elements, click on it, place it over here. 
and we want to scale the faces, but we want to scale the top faces that we've just created. Okay, the top extrusion. So plug it into the selection, and now we can take this and scale them. So let's bring them into the negatives a little bit, just a little tiny bit. So you can see there we have now these extrusions coming inwards, and then let's extrude those extrusions. So we're going to take the extrude mesh, shift D to duplicate, place it over here, and let's do now another extrusion, and let's extrude up. And once again, it's going to extrude um, most of them like this. But what we want to do is we want to grab that top selection here and only extrude that selection, the original extrusion that we did. So now you can see we have these gaps. And if you want to control those gaps, you can essentially come here to the scale elements now, and you can control how big that gap is by using that value. Okay. So I'm going to have something like that, just a little bit smaller than a value of one. And this is looking pretty cool. And this is very similar to how we did the cobblestones in a tutorial I did a few months ago. But what we want here is we want random height. So how do we do that? And that's essentially going to come down now to the offset scale. Okay. So let's try by grabbing this. Let's just grab it. I'm going to grab it over here. And I'm going to type in scene and I'm going to get a scene time node. And I'll make that seconds. Okay. Now all that's going to do, if we hit the space bar, it's going to make it grow indefinitely, right? And it'll grow as long as the animation goes. So we need that to sort of be in a pulse. So the way we can constrict that is by using a fraction, okay? So what we'll do, we'll actually grab the scene time and we'll go shift a search and get a fraction. Just type in fraction. So utilities, math, fraction. Place it on this cable over here and it should just go into the value here. And now what will happen is it'll kind of work in a fraction like this, you can see, right? So it's going up and down, starting again, starting again, but we want that to be a little bit more smooth and a little bit more controlled. So let's go ahead and we'll go shift a search and get a math. Let's get a math utility, place it on this cable between the scene time and the fraction. Let's multiply it. And now what we're going to do, we're going to multiply the scene time by something. And the best way to do that is to use the position. So let's drag on this value and type in position. And there we go. It's a read position. There we go. And we want to evaluate it on what, right? If we just left it like this, you can see this is a pretty cool effect we're getting here. If you want to go with that, but I think we could do better by actually basing it on the distance of the positions. So let's go shift a search and get a vector. And we'll just go with a vector math and the thing we'd be looking for is distance let's just type in distance a so vector math distance there we go and then place it on this cable make sure it goes into the top vector here okay so now we're evaluating it on the distance you can see that uh, it looks a little bit better so that's kind of cool what it's giving us here but okay it's way too fast so how do we control the scene time here so the simple way to do that is just to grab a math node so let's grab the multiply shift d to duplicate place it on here and then just multiply this value by a smaller value. So it's very simple, you understand this. If I took the number two and I multiplied it by two, it's gonna be four. But if I multiplied it by 0.5, it's only gonna be one. So we're decreasing when we multiply by a value that's less than one. So we're not using a whole number, it's sub one. So let's maybe make this 0.03. And now you can see this is happening really slow. So I can always increase it. So maybe make it 0.13 or maybe make it a little bit more, you get the idea, right? So something like that. Now that's looking cool, but I think we can smooth it out a little bit. And the way we always like to smooth is either using a map range, or in my case, I really like the visual element of using the um, color ramp. So I'm gonna go shift A search and get a ramp, get the color ramp, place it on here. And essentially wanna clamp the black value up a little bit here. Okay, and we want to take the end value, we also want to make that black. So essentially it's limiting it. So as this fraction happens, it's going to come back to where it needs to be. Otherwise, we're going to have the stepping effect, right? So we want it to start in this value and end in this value. And then somewhere in the middle, so we hit, go ahead and hit plus, we can add another marker. And somewhere in the middle, we want the white value. So essentially it's going to start here, pulse, and then come back. And that is how our fraction is now sort of defined. So if we now hit the space bar, we can see we're kind of getting that sort of back and forth like that. Okay. And you can always mess around with these, clamp them together a bit to get more of an effect. 
You can also change this from linear to B spline, so this works really nicely. Really good way to smooth things out. And that's it, okay? So that's just the basics here. We're gonna keep it about that simple. We don't have to make it more complicated, but you can always mess around with this if you want. Also, one more thing that I think, and this is optional, but I think this really makes it look even cooler, is if you go shift a search, you just get a math, get another math node, place it on the end here, and then just make this, we can leave it as an add, but just add a negative value. So let's just go with something like negative, um, I don't know, let's go 0.2. There we go, it's negative 0.2. And now look at that, it sort of goes into the honeycomb at some points, and that looks kind of cool. I think that just looks really, really nice, okay? So let's quickly go to our materials. Okay, let's go over here to the materials tab. Let's just create a material and we'll call it, I don't know, let's just call it top and let's just create another material new and let's call it bottom okay and what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our geometry nodes and right after the extrude mesh we're going to go shift a search and get a set material there we go grab it place it over here and let's just come here and make that the top material okay and we want to sh make sure to grab that top remember that just means those extruded top faces here, right? That's where we want to actually add that material to. And let's go Shift D to duplicate that and then place it on the cable going into here, the mesh. And we'll change that to the bottom material, like that, okay? So now this is our node setup, not too complicated. So what we'll do is we'll go over to our render engine, change it from EV to Cycles. If you have a GPU, always make sure to use it if you can. And then go over to your render and change it max samples down to something more manageable like 45. And if the noising is enabled, you'll get quite a nice result. So then let's go back to our layout. Shift A, let's go to our mesh options, add in a plane and scale that plane up like that. That's going to be our floor. Then select your camera. Press zero on your number pad to go into your camera view. Go over to your camera settings and change the focal length to 200. And now you've got a nice narrow view like this. I'm going to kind of come here, kind of have it off to the side a little bit. You can do this however you want, but I'm going to have it like that. There we go. And now I'm going to go Shift A. I'm going to go to my light options, add in an area light. G, Z, I'll move that area light up. I'll go over to my light properties, give it a strength of 120. And then I'm going to increase that size a little bit. And you can now take this light. You can rotate it however you want. You can do the Shift D command to duplicate and then rotate that light. And using this, you can make whatever sort of lighting setup you want. So this is completely up to you how you want to light this. So I'll leave it at that. For now, I've just added two simple lights, okay? So at this point, what you could do is you can actually just grab your object here. You can go to your materials. This is grab that top one. And for now, we'll leave it white, but the bottom one will make that red we'll give it a metallic value and bring the roughness down a bit. So if you go Z and go rendered, you can see this is what we have. That's already looking really, really cool. And even if this was your animation and you rendered this out, that would still look really, really nice. Okay, but I think we can do this even a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna quickly show you. I'm gonna add a material, but I'll show you where you can get this material. So just bear with me. I'll show you how to do this. Just let me do it first. I'm gonna go file, I'm gonna go append. I have a library here, and this is material that I'm gonna use called hexagonal concrete. So it's just a file inside of there is a blend file that I'm going to click on. I'm going to go to the material and then click on that hexagonal concrete pavers. And I'm going to go ahead and append that material. Then I'm going to click on the floor. I'm going to go over to my materials, come to the drop down, and give it that hexagonal concrete paving. So if I go Z and go rendered, I can see I have that material. Now you're probably wondering, I want to do that too. So where can I get that material? I'm going to quickly show you. I'm going to go to the internet. I'm going to type in Polyhaven. That's what you can do too. Then click on Polyhaven. Then go over to their assets. Click on textures. Then you're going to go over here to floor. And then you can just go through here and look till you find it. So just scroll down. It should be here with the floor. And you don't even have to use that one. You can use any of these ones if you think they look even better. And a lot of them do. So you can choose any one of these ones you want. So in this case, I can't find it here. So I'm just going to type in hex and see if I can get it. Here we go, I just typed in hex here in the search and here's the hexagonal concrete paper. Okay, so once you click on it, you can come over here by default, you can just leave it as it is. You can see Blender is selected and you can come here and just download the zip file. 
And then just like any other zip file, once it's downloaded in your downloads, just extract that file. And inside of there is a blend file. And that is the blend file that I went and appended in, as you guys saw earlier. Okay, I went file, append, I found that blend file, and then I found the materials file inside of there and appended it in. So very simple to do. Once you've done that, select that um, floor again, once you've added it to it, go Z, go rendered, and just go into your, sh I guess your shading workspace. And in your shading workspace, while you're in rendered mode, just come over here to your scale and change it to something like free. And then if you want to, you can come over here, shift A, search and type in ramp, get a color ramp and place it over the color output here for the map. And then you can come here and change these values and colors to whatever you want, okay? Something like that, make them a bit darker, kind of up the contrast, down the contrast, whatever you wanna do, okay? So you can play around with this Add whatever you want, but you get the idea. I like just making it a little bit more reddish, just kind of go with the overall theme. But this is just a really cool material to add. And then one last thing, if we go back into our layout, okay, if you want to, you can actually grab the camera. You can go over to your depth of field and then click on the bottom one here to focus. And then just click here, somewhere about around here. And then bring this down to point three. Then if we go Z and we go rendered, you can see we have that nice sort of soft focus, okay? Now this is gonna increase render time, so it's gonna make this look really, really nice, as you can see here. So there we have it. So what you can do now, you can make sure to save this, and then you can just go um, render and render it out as an animation. Now obviously, if you don't already know this, before you do that, you wanna make sure you go over to your output and change it to whatever format. So if you wanna do image sequences, then compile afterwards, you can do that by default, or you can change it from image to video, and then change over here your encoder to maybe like an mp4 but that's up to you okay how you want to render this out this has been the tutorial and i will be uploading my original which is exactly the same thing to my patreon for those of you supporting the channel there um, and that's also a big help to me and gives you access to hundreds of blend files and things that i've put on there over the years so um, in the description if you want to check that out